If you think the most brutal wars on Earth are fought by humans with tanks and missiles, you are looking at the wrong scale. Right beneath your feet, in the soil of sub-Saharan Africa, a conflict has been raging for millions of years. It is a war of total annihilation, involving millions of soldiers, chemical weapons, armored tanks, and siege tactics. This is not a random brawl. It is a calculated strategic military campaign between the Matabele ants and the termite colonies. We are talking about an aggressor that has evolved solely to hunt one specific enemy and a defender that has built fortress cities to keep them out. The violence you are about to witness is graphic. Heads will be severed, limbs will be torn off, toxic glue will be sprayed. But in the middle of this carnage, scientists recently discovered something that changed everything we thought we knew about insect intelligence. It turns out these cold-blooded killers have a secret, compassionate side that was previously thought to be unique only to humans. Welcome to the front line of the ultimate insect war. Let's introduce the aggressors, Megapanera analis, commonly known as the Matabele ant. These are not your average picnic ants. They are the navy seals of the insect world. Growing up to two centimeters long, they are heavily armored with a thick exoskeleton that acts like a bulletproof vest. They are armed with powerful mandibles capable of crushing armor and a stinger that delivers a potent neurotoxin. But their most dangerous weapon is their specialization. They do not eat sugar. They do not scavenge for crumbs. They eat termites exclusively. Their entire society is built around the raiding and pillaging of termite mounds. They function with a terrifying hive mind efficiency. Before a raid begins, a lone scout leaves the nest to search for food. This scout is looking for the scent of termites. When it finds a feeding site, it doesn't attack. It returns to base, laying down a chemical pheromone trail. This is the signal for war. Within minutes, a column of 200 to 500 warrior ants assembles, marching in a strict formation, guided by the scent trail straight to the battlefield. Waiting for them is the termite colony. While ants are hunters, termites are builders. A termite mound is an engineering marvel featuring climate control systems, fungal gardens, and hardened walls that can be as hard as concrete. But the termites are not defenseless pacifists. They have a caste system designed for war. The workers are soft-bodied and vulnerable, but the soldier termites are biological nightmares. They have evolved massive, oversized heads that are so large they can not even feed themselves. Workers have to feed them. These heads are heavily muscle-bound to power their weapons. Depending on the species, some soldier termites have razor-sharp mandibles that can slice an ant in half. Others, known as nastute termites, have evolved a gun-like nozzle on their faces. They can fire a sticky, toxic glue that entangles the ants, immobilizing them and slowly poisoning them. When the alarm is raised, the workers retreat deep into the mound to seal off the queen, while the soldiers rush to the breach, forming a living wall of snapping jaws and chemical sprayers. They are the Spartans of the soil, ready to die to protect the colony. The battle begins the moment the ant column arrives. It is chaos, but controlled chaos. The larger, major ants act as tanks, using their sheer size to break through the termite defense lines formed by the soldiers. The smaller, minor ants rush into the gaps, grabbing the soft termite workers. It is a massacre. The sound of clicking mandibles and the smell of alarm pheromones fill the air. The termites fight back ferociously. The soldier termites clamp on to the ant's legs and antennae. Once a termite soldier bites down, it often refuses to let go, even if its body is torn apart. You will often see an ant running around with the severed head of a termite still clamped on to its leg. The nastute termites spray their glue, gumming up the ant's joints, trying to slow down the invasion force. It is a numbers game. The ants need to kill enough termites quickly and drag them away before the termite defenses become too overwhelming or before they get bogged down in the sticky glue. Speed and brutality are the keys to the ants' victory. 
But here is where the story takes a twist that shocked the entire scientific community. For centuries, we looked at insects as disposable biological robots. We assumed that in a war like this, if an ant soldier gets injured, if it loses a leg or gets glued by a termite, it's left behind to die. After all, the colony is what matters, not the individual, right? Wrong. In 2017, researchers discovered that Matabele ants do something previously thought to be uniquely human. They don't leave their wounded behind. They conduct search and rescue missions. When a raid is over, the healthy ants grab the termite bodies to carry them home. But the injured ants, the ones missing legs or covered in termite soldiers, release a distress pheromone. It's a chemical scream for help. When a healthy mate smells this, it stops. It inspects the injured ant. The injured ant actually cooperates by curling up its legs to make itself easier to carry. The healthy ant then picks up its wounded comrade and carries it all the way back to the nest. This isn't just a random act. It is a systematic evacuation. But it gets even crazier. Once they're back in the safety of the nest, the treatment begins. The other ants will crowd around the injured soldier and begin to lick the wounds intensely. For a long time, we thought this was just cleaning, but it's actually medical surgery. The ant's saliva contains antimicrobial compounds. By licking the open wounds, they are disinfecting them to prevent infection. In cases where a termite is still clamped on to the ant, the nurse ants will carefully remove the termite. This treatment reduces the mortality rate of injured ants from 80% down to just 10%. Now, I want you to pause and think about this. Why do they do it? Is it empathy? Is it love? Or is it cold, hard calculation? Scientists believe it is purely economic. Matabele ants have small colonies compared to other species. Every soldier represents a significant investment of resources. It costs less energy to heal a veteran soldier than to grow a new one from an egg. The medic behavior is simply a way to maintain their military strength. Interestingly, if an ant is too heavily injured, say missing five legs, the other ants will ignore its distress calls. They perform triage. They assess who is savable and who is not. If you're too broken, you're left to die for the good of the colony. It's a brutal, pragmatic form of mercy. This raises a fascinating question for the comments section. Do you think this behavior counts as caring, or is it just biological programming? Where do you draw the line between instinct and emotion? The war between the Matabele ants and the termites will never end. It's an eternal cycle of attack and defense, innovation and adaptation. The termites build stronger walls. The ants develop better tactics. The termites evolve stickier glue. The ants evolve medical care. It's an arms race occurring beneath our feet every single day. It reminds us that complex societies, warfare, and even healthcare are not unique inventions of humanity. We are just the latest players in a game that insects have been mastering for millions of years. If you enjoyed this glimpse into the brutal world of insect warfare, please smash that like button. It helps us feed the algorithm. And subscribe so you don't miss our next deep dive into nature's strangest stories. Thanks for watching, and watch where you step.